Hi everyone and thanks for watching my online lesson on adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers. So the first question here says two fifths add one seventh and the most common mistake we see time and time again is students just adding the numerators together. So adding together the two and one to get three, adding together the denominators, so five and seven is twelve and getting the answer of three twelfths. But this does not work. If you look here, I've picked a different example and used diagrams to show you that it doesn't work. So I've picked, this is a third and I've done a rough sketch on a diagram of what a third looks like. Then I've got a half here. Now if we use that method and add together the numerators and add together the denominators, I get two fifths. But this is roughly what two fifths looks like. And that is not the same thing as these two fractions added together. These added together would be a much bigger fraction, okay? That the half alone is bigger than the two fifths, the answer that I've got. So it just doesn't make sense. So there's another method I need to use. So I'm just going to get rid of this diagram because I'm going to need this space to do some working out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find a common denominator. So I need to find a number that 5 and 7 will both go into. So I really need to find a common multiple of 5 and 7. Now, the easiest way to do this is to times the 5 and 7 together. So 5 times 7 is 35, and then I'm guaranteed a number that both 5 and 7 go into. So um, 35 is going to be my common denominator, so I want to change the denominator of both of my fractions to 35. Now, I can't just do that and keep my numerators as they are. I'm going to have to change the numerators as well so that I've got an equivalent fraction. I don't want to actually change the value of the fraction. And if I leave it as 2 over 35, because I had 2 fifths, then I'm actually changing what the fraction is worth. So to get from 5 to 35 then, I've had to times by 7. So I'm times in the denominator by 7. I'll have to times the numerator by 7 as well in order to keep it an equivalent fraction. So 2 times 7 is 14. So 2 fifths is equivalent to 14 30 fifths. Now with my second fraction, to get from 7 to 35, I'm times in by 5. So I'm going to have to do the same to my numerator. So 1 times 5 is 5. So 1 seventh is equivalent to 5 over 35. And now I've got two fractions that have the same denominator. I can add them together quite simply because if I've got 14 35ths and then I get another 5 35ths, well in total I've got 19 35ths. So we keep the denominator the same and just add together the numerators. And that's important as well. Another common mistake we see is that students would get 19 over 70 because they're adding together the denominators as well, but you don't need to add those together. So that's the answer, 19 35ths. Here's another example. This time I've got subtract instead of add, uh, but it's still simple fractions. Now the reason I've picked this example is because I've just said in the last question that the easiest thing to do in order to find a common denominator is multiply your two denominators together. So here 12 times 6 is 72 and I'd be using the denominator of 72. And although that will work and you will get a correct solution, it can be easier to find the lowest common multiple. So here a much smaller number that both 12 and 6 go into is 12. So actually that would be much simpler. So I'm going to leave my first fraction as it is because that one is already out of 12. And I just need to make my second fraction out of 12. So if we look, it's currently um, it has a denominator of 6. So to get from 6 to 12, I've times it by 2. So I need to times my numerator by 2 as well so that I keep it an equivalent fraction. So 5 6 is the same as 10 over 12. And now I'm just going to do as I did before, but this time it's subtract. So I'm going to do 11 twelfths, take away 10 twelfths, while I'm left with 1 twelfth. 
So I'm subtracting my numerators, but leaving my denominator alone. So that's 1 twelfth. Now let's look at one that has um, mixed numbers. So this is 4 and 2 thirds take away 2 and 3 quarters. Now there's two different methods you can use, and the same for adding mixed numbers as well. You can treat the number parts, so the 5 and the 2, separate from the fractions, and then deal with what answer you get afterwards, or you can change them both to improper fractions. And every time I will encourage students to change them into improper fractions, especially when it's a subtract, because it can be much more complicated dealing with them separately. So the easiest way to do it is change them both to improper fractions. So I'm going to do this to the side. So 5 and 2 thirds. So to get that as an improper fraction, I do 5 times 3, add 2 to get my numerator. And that's all going to be over 3. Leave my denominator as it is. So that's 5 times 3 is 15, add 2 is 17 over 3. So 5 and 2 thirds is the same as 17 thirds. And 2 and 3 quarters. To get my numerator, I'm going to do 2 times 4, add the 3 as the numerator. Leave my denominator as it is, so it's still going to be a 4. 2 times 4 is 8, add 3 is 11, so it's 11 over 4. So I'm just going to rewrite this question out, but I'm going to write it with my improper fractions, so it's 17 thirds take away 11 quarters. So this time my common denominator is going to be 12, and there's no smaller number I can use, so I'm going to rewrite these with a 12 as the denominator. To change the 3 into a 12, I was multiplying by 4, so I'm going to have to do 17 times 4, which is 68. And then to change the 4 into a 12, I multiplied by 3. So I'm going to do 11 times 3, which is 33. And now I do my subtraction. So I'm going to do 68 take away 33, which is 35. And that's over 12. Keep the denominator as it is. Now this question doesn't say leave your answer as a mixed number, it doesn't say simplify or anything like that, so that answer is fine as it is, 35 over 12. If you do want to know what is a mixed number, if you've zoomed ahead and you've got an answer as a mixed number, then 12 goes into 35 twice with a remainder of 11, so it's 2 and 11 twelfths. Either one of these answers or anything equivalent to these will be fine for the full three marks. Here's a question for you to try. So this is adding together mixed numbers. So like the last question, you should be aiming first to change them into improper fractions, get your common denominator and add your numerators, leave your denominator as it is. And this says give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So pause the video and unpause when you're ready to see the solutions. So here's the full solution. So the first thing I've done is I've written them as improper fractions. You should have got 5 thirds and 11 quarters. Again, my denominator is going to be 12, my common denominator. So you get 20 twelfths add 33 twelfths. Add together your numerators, that's 53 over 12. And now here it says, give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. And you might be tricked into thinking, well, that already is in its simplest form, but it's not. When it says simplest form, if you can change it into a mixed number, you should. That is a simpler form than the improper fraction version. So you have to change it into a mixed number. And 12 goes into 53 four times. That's 48 with a remainder of five. So it's four and five twelfths. Thank you for watching.